Hey everyone, Be Asian Day here. Today we're going to look at this Dell Latitude 5400 notebook. Now this is a bit of a workhorse computer here and you actually find, this, especially the 5000 series, you actually find this very common in medium to large size businesses and you'll find them quite a large number of them as well too. So this is a bit of an important computer for a lot of organization. Now before I get on with the review, I'd first like to make my thanks to the Dell A and Z team for making this review possible. So thank you guys. Now I'm going to quickly go through the specs of this computer and then we'll go and actually look into the thermals of this computer, also how loud this computer is and we'll also look into how much features you can get and also the touch and feel of it and also the actual display, especially the display we're going to look into there. Now first off, we're going to go through the specs of this computer here. Now for the processor wise, it does run at the Intel 8th generation processor there. So you can actually get anywhere between the i3 which is two cores, you get to get i5 which is four cores and you can get the i7 with four cores as well. Now this computer is configurable all the way up to 32 gigs of RAM. That runs off two DIMM slots here. And for the hard drive wise, it does run an M.2 slot there. So you can actually have up to one terabyte of SSD hard drive. And as for the two and a half inch hard drive, it does have space for that, uh, but you do need to look into the battery. So we'll more about that when we look in the internals of the computer there, more for later on the video itself. So it does house, it can house a two and a half inch SATA hard drive there and as for the graphics wise now it does have the Intel integrated graphics Intel 620 graphics which is just the basic graphics there but you can opt in for a discrete graphics in this computer here and that will be the AMD Radon 540X. Now as for screen wise there are actually three options there so there is a HD option and there is a full HD option and there's also a full HD option with touch which is what this one here is uh, I've got here. Now all those display will have a rating of 220 nits of brightness but we'll test this one out in a later part of this video there. So let's have a look at the ports on the computer. So look on the right hand side we've got the micro SD card reader, we have the optional USIM, we have a headphone jack, we have then two USB 3.1 that's gen 1 and there is one of them which is PowerShare and then we have a HDMI port then we have the RJ45 Ethernet and it works off the lever and then we have a noble lock at the very end which is fantastic to tie your computer down. Now looking on the left hand side we've got the AC barrel for power then we've got a USB-C now this one can be a display port or it could option for a Thunderbolt 3 port as well now this also is then a USB 3.1 Gen 1, then we've got the exhaust vent here and then over here will be the, the optional smart card if you do have an opt-in there, this one does not. Now it does come with a 720p webcam here and it does have this privacy shutter which is fantastic, I'm loving that they was actually add them to a lot of their computers here and all that is is just a little switch here on above here and it's a matter of just flicking and you'll actually see it go red on the left side here which means it's actually been disabled which is fantastic so you don't need that blue tack or a little electrical tape to go over it anymore so it's great there. So let's look at the keyboard here. Now the keyboard here is your typical Dell keyboard lately for the 2019 versions and actually quite a nice bit of spacing there and plus the keyboard travels is actually quite nice there as well too and it's got a bit of a nice smooth feel to it there. And as for the trackpad, it's actually got a quite a nice smooth feel to the trackpad. It's got a decent size for the trackpad there and if you've got a, even got a bit of a moist or wet fingers, it can still go through the trackpad. So it registers quite nice and it's actually got five points there for that. Now I have actually created a nice video about the trackpads and Windows 10 and how you actually can use the different gestures there. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description below, you'll find a little waiver here as well too. Now it also does have two buttons for your left and right click for your mouse pad there, so which is just great here. Now as for the battery, it can house a three or four cell battery and it does have express charge as well. Now this one I've got here is the four cell battery and when I did run my tests on the battery life here, I ran in three different modes. So under performance mode, had the screen brightness at 100% and 
running this computer at pretty much stressed out at 100% there. I managed to usually average around about two hours on the battery there. Now, bringing the computer down to better battery mode there, had the screen brightness at 50%, and I was averaging around about seven and a half hours on my average use there, streaming and just doing productivity work there. Now, as for the battery saving mode, again, I kept the display at 50% for the display, and I was averaging around about 15 and a half hours. So that's pretty decent for this computer here. So you're looking at for battery life anywhere between two hours to 15 and a half hours. That's pretty good for this computer here. So what the express charge means is it will actually charge up the battery from zero to 80% in one hour's time. And then to actually do from zero to 100%, you're looking around about just under two hours to actually charge the actual battery there. Now the computer does come with a 65 watt power adapter here. Now this computer that I've got here does not have the discrete graphics option there. So that's why the, it's got a 65 watt adapter. Now if you do have the discrete graphics option put into the computer here, you will be probably more than likely have the 90 watt power adapter for to keep this computer running very well. So there are two speakers located on the bottom front of the laptop. And when I did my sound test for the loudness, it managed to peak at a maximum of 85.6 decibels. And I find the actual sound quality, it was pretty average there. It doesn't have a really crazy bass and it does do a bit of distortion at the top end as well. But that's what you kind of look at for a two speaker system on a business laptop. And looking at the weight of the computer, now this is just a non-aluminium version, it's just a plastic version, and we're looking at 1.57 kilos. So let's have a look at the internals of the Latitude 5400. Now I've already unscrewed all the screws already, that's from the back cover, there are actually eight of them, so they're just located here, and then you just slowly pry your way through, like every other computer. And I'm just going to remove the back cover there. And this is what the internals of it looks like. So first off, we'll start on the bottom here. We've got the four cell 68 watt hour battery. There is a three cell battery version of this. And that was required if you want to put a two and a half inch hard drive. And it's just to make this physical room. So the actual three cell battery is 181 mils. So that will be sitting right here and then you do need an adapter to fit into here. And then on the left side of that, we've got the M.2 SSD hard drive which you can plug in here. And above that, we have the Wi-Fi card here and does Bluetooth as well. And then we've got the WAN card, that's the option over there. And then we've got the CMOS battery and you just unplug this part to, to undo that one there when you want to reset that one there. After that, we've got two SOLDIM slots here for RAM. And then above that, we've got the heatsink for the CPU, and then we've got the system fan running right here. So it's pretty simple, easy in, of the internals. Of course, we've got the speakers down at the bottom as well. But that's pretty much all you really need to do. It's just upgrades these two here. We're doing a few tests at the exact same time at the moment, and I'm going to explain all the different things we're looking for for this test here. So at the moment, I'm stress testing the computer at, and having the CPU run at 100%. The RAM is currently running quite high at the moment and same with the disk as well. So it is actually stress test at the moment. So I've been running this test for close to nearly about 50 minutes now, but after 10 minutes, it's pretty much stabilized and it's pretty much sitting at what it is sitting now. So first off, we're going to look at the CPU. So the CPU I have here is an i7 8665U and its base clock is at 1.9 gigahertz and it can go turbo boost at all the way up to 4.8 gigahertz. So at the moment we're seeing this speed here which is the CPU speed is currently seeing at anywhere between 2.4 to 2.5 is what it's currently stable at and the temperature for it is pretty much rock stable at anywhere between 69 to 70 degrees Celsius so and that's pretty much flat lining there so it's pretty much just staying there and keep holding that very steadily at the moment. Now as for the actual temperature of the computer now as you can see I'm going to bring the camera down a little bit as you can see I've got the, my good old temperature gauge from my food thermometer and it's sitting between the caps lock key and the shift key. Now that's because this is actually the most hottest area of the computer. The CPU is actually located where the T, Y and P key is, 
but that's where the CPU is, but that's still not as hot as down here because this is where the exhaust comes out. So this is the most hottest area. And currently it is sitting at, as you can see, pretty much steady around about 40.3 degrees Celsius. And my ambient temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. And if I'm just gonna look down a little bit more, you can also, and I will shut up, you'll see the fan itself will be looking at about 33 decibels. Now on the back end of the computer, and the actually hottest part is actually near the center of the back of the computer, and that is sitting at 39.3 to 39.4 degrees Celsius. So that back cover is quite toasty, so don't have this computer on your lap. I've got the computer doing average use, so the CPU is running around anywhere between 15 to 30% and I'm measuring a reading of 31.6 degrees Celsius between the caps and shift key. So it's very, very touchable there. So you can pretty much rest your hands on that. And as for the fan noise, I'll just be quiet and you should see it. So you're looking around about 30 decibels. The screen is now calibrated with the Spider Free Pro. I've had this for a number of years and it's very trustworthy for me and I prefer using this software here because it's nicely to show the color change of the profile once it's been calibrated. So this is what it looks like at a factory from Dell, the screen. Now this is the full HD touchscreen version of it and this is before calibration. So after calibration I can definitely see it's warmed up a lot more for sure. So this is after calibration and this is before color calibration. After, I can definitely see the yellows uh, a lot more and I definitely see the black and whites have gone a lot better as well too for sure. In terms of greenness, magenta hasn't really changed too much. I think it's more of a yellow, so more of the actual warmer itself and probably giving a little bit of more magenta there. So before calibration, after calibration. So we're going to measure the brightness or luminance of the screen. I have the X-Rite i1 display tool here to help me measure the brightness of this screen. Now, the reading that we need to take note of is this one here called current. It is measured in candela per square meter and one candela per square meter is one nit of brightness. So at the moment we're reading 121 candela per square meter, so that's 121 nit of brightness. Now there are 10 increments to the brightness of the screen, so we're gonna go through each one of them. So I'm gonna bring it all the way down to zero, and that's currently sitting at 13 nit. Increment one is 23 nit. Increment two is 48 nit. Increment Three is 72 nit. Increment four is 97 nit. Increment five is 121 nit. Now this is very interesting. So four and five is where you want to be at for the target for photographers and videographers because we they do recommend at 100 and anywhere between 100 to 120 is where you need to be for the brightness of a screen, is that's the recommended one. So we're going to increment six, we're sitting at 145 nit. Increment seven is 169 nit. Increment eight is 193 nit. Increment nine is 213 nit. And last but not least, at increment 10 is 240 nit. So the maximum brightness of the full HD screen is 240 nit of brightness. So this is the touchscreen version here. So we're testing the color gamut of the screen. So this is the full HD touchscreen version and we have 55% sRGB and 38% Adobe RGB coverage. I have created a color profile using this x i1 display and I will share that color profile with you guys. Check in the link in the description below. 
so you'll find that color profile. Now be wary, it is running off my ambient temperature, but at least it gives you a very good starting point for the color profiles. Now, if you are actually working with colors professionally, I do advise you to actually get your own hardware color calibrator. It is a lifesaver, so definitely look into that. So this is a new test I'm adding to my reviews and it's just to see how the screen goes with glare. So on the left here, I've actually got my mobile phone. Now that is a glass base protector along with of course glass screen. And on the right here is a wet and dry paper and that doesn't really reflect as much now. So I'm gonna run a light now so you can actually see and how that performs. So I will try and keep this consistent. Now I'm going to run the light 45 degrees angle above the screen and for both testers the light is 50 centimeters away from the screen. This is the very first time I'm running this type of test. Now please put a comment below to see if this was actually useful or what I can actually improve on that. And if you enjoyed it, give it a like as well. Now I did run the benchmarks of this computer here and I'll put up the pass mark results I've got from this computer here and I also put up the results I got for the Cinebench R15 and R20 for you if you're interested there. Now this computer is great to be paired up with the Dell WD19 and the WD19TB if you've got the Thunderbolt enabled version of this Latitude 5400. Now this is a great dock for these Latitude series there. If you find this video informative or enjoyed it, give it a like. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. I do try to upload a new video every Tuesdays and Fridays. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.